Once again, I'm Matthew. Um, I'm a mobile app developer. I work on iOS apps. So, Lightning, like, what does that look like on an iPhone? Those are questions that I ask. And specifically, like, what does a non-mobile wallet look like? So what is like a Lightning app that's like doing something, something related to an invoice and then like something, something trying to pay that invoice? Like, what does that all look in like a native, like mobile experience? Uh, and so I built a Swift app uh, for iOS and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and demo that. Uh, two things before I demo, I guess. I'm, on, I'm gonna run through it the first time, like in real time, so like we can see how fast or slow or like how good or bad that experience is. Uh, and then I'll come back around and do it again and kind of slow it down, uh, dig into some of the information a little bit more. Um, second thing is the app, just like the gist of it is we're trying to get like NFL scores um, and to get them we need to pay a lightning invoice uh, and then we should get the data. So, all right, so I hop into the app, I'm not hiding anything, we just have no data right now basically. So I want to get NFL game scores, it's right there. All right, I've got my lightning invoice already. Cool, so I just want to pay that, I guess. Uh, and boom, like I'm already in Zap, we're ready to pay, all I have to do is just hit send. So, send, and uh, hop back over to the app, and I've got the data already. This was like a pretty like seamless, quick experience. Uh, and so now that I've got this like base layer of data, that was inaccessible to me before. Uh, I can start building stuff on top of this eventually. Uh, right now, just for this week, just because it's like lightning and uh, reckless working on lightning or something like that. Uh, I just created like images or whatever. So if you're a fan of the Minnesota Vikings or something like that, uh, and you want to like tweet out a picture or something, you just kind of hook right into the normal like iOS ecosystem, and you can do all the things you normally would want to do. You could save an image, uh, tweet it out. I'll go ahead and do that right now. Uh, see if that worked too. Sweet. Okay. So I've got my image that I just tweeted out. And uh, yeah, that's like a pretty seamless, like normal experience in iOS. It like feels like a, a normal app on the iPhone, like nothing funky or like janky about it. Um, so I'm gonna run through it one more time, I'll just take it a little bit slower this time, and uh, I'll kind of explain the inner workings of it. All right, so we open the app up, and I'm getting data from the Insured Bits API. And I wanna like stop here for a second too, because like five years ago, I tried to build a sports app, and there's a bunch of this data, whether it be sports data or like other types, that are inaccessible to like an indie developer like me or even a small company. Um, it's bigger companies that own this data. They don't care about like working with me or partnering with me or letting me uh, have access to that data. Um, if somehow I was able to like get in touch with them, then I have like the privilege of paying like four figures a month just for like a basic starter package, uh, which my uncle would just like make a dumb joke and say that's like a non-starter package. Um, but I won't make that joke. Uh, and so this is really cool that Lightning uh, has enabled like a company like Sherbits to build something like brand new on top of it, like try out a new business model, um, so that I can hop into an app and have access to this data uh, just to start without having to pay like four figures. Um, so that's really cool. Um, so what I'm doing here is you just get the NFL game scores. I'm making a request to Sherbits. I'm getting a Lightning invoice. Now I want to pay that so I can get the data. And this is important too. Uh, I've got the Lightning invoice, and I want the user to just be able to pay it as soon as possible, like as easy as possible. Like I don't even want them to have to like close out the app and go like hunt down their wallet app. Uh, maybe it's like a couple levels deep, or maybe they forget to like copy the invoice. I want to use like the iOS system to just go straight into the context that I want to go into. So on my end, what I do is use the Lightning URI scheme, which is Lightning colon uh, the invoice, and I serve that up to the system. And uh, on the other end, if you're a wallet, if you register that URL scheme, if that gets like put into the system, you can just grab that down because you know what to do with that scheme. So that's what's happening in this interaction. I'm serving up the uh, URL, 
Zap says, I'm registered for this, I know what to do with this, and they also like present it in a really nice way. So the only step I have to take here is like literally just hit send, um, which is really nice. And hop back and all the data's there. Um, so there's like multiple levels that can be built on top of this now. Um, and I'm gonna talk about those a little bit real quick. Shut this down. Okay, so this is mostly about kind of how I was thinking about building this app out and how a lightning app experience would work on mobile. Um, things I thought going into it and then also things I was like learning uh, and that were getting like cemented in my head about this experience. Um, so the first thing is I was trying to minimize kind of the round trip for the user from wanting something to like getting it. Um, and we've got a couple steps in between there. Like we have an invoice, we have to pay that. Uh, there could be other steps involved. Um, but kind of what we got it down to was we have three taps. So like requesting the data, sending me to Zap, and then just like one button tap and Zap, and then one swipe, so three, one, and I'm already there, and it takes like 10 seconds or something like that to go round trip for this experience using Lightning. Um, that's really cool to me. Um, I wasn't sure that that was possible. Uh, the second thing was not using uh, a keyboard, uh, potentially. Um, if I don't have to have the user manually input anything into the system, uh, maybe make a mistake or maybe have to do something that takes too long, like that's a good experience that I want for the user. Uh, so we were able to do that and part of that is the third thing uh, that I mentioned before. And this probably would be my like actual recommendation for like people building mobile apps um, is use this like lightning URI. Like it's there to make things easy for the users um, so as a developer, I need to like tap into all those tools that are created for us and not add on any additional layers of complexity. So from a third party Lightning app side, uh, being able to like serve those up to the system. And then if you are a wallet app, making sure that you register that URL scheme to make it super easy for uh, whatever person trying to pay for an invoice to get to you. Um, next to last thing is, uh, don't make the user sweat in the process. Uh, so in this process, I was the user. Uh, the only reason I would have been sweating is because I'm doing like a live demo on something I built, you know, a week or so. Uh, but it was pretty. It was pretty simple. It was like all normal interactions that I would make on iOS normally or in like a mobile phone. Uh, I wasn't having to like memorize anything or like think through the process really. Like you literally could just go like, give me the stuff, send me to Zap pay the invoice, and then you have everything. It's like taking away any complexity that the user doesn't need to see and only showing them what they need to see, like showing them the invoice, uh, showing them the details of the invoice before they pay it. Um, so that's a pretty nice experience. Uh, and the last thing is when I think about taking users through an app, there's like two steps for me. Um, and I'll go to the second one first, which is like, does the user find this valuable at all? Um, so there's a bunch of us in here. Uh, you could be looking at this app and saying like, uh, I've got an iPhone and I would just like try it once just to see what that payment experience looks like. Otherwise, you know, I don't care. Or you could be looking at it saying like, I don't care about sports at all. I don't sport. Uh, and that's fine too. Uh, or you could be saying, I would use this once a week. Or if you layered this on top of it, I would use it every day. And that's like the point I want to get to with people where they can get that to that point where they decide like if they like the app or not. Um, but the first step that has to happen before that is me getting the person through like the full circle of uh, basically being able to like pay and use the app uh, and not get stuck or not like give up because it takes too long so that they can decide on whether they like the app or not. Um, and that second step is a part I can just continuously and like iterate on and like make better and like add stuff to or like pull things away from. Um, so this was all pretty nice and uh, easy and I was definitely surprised like that this kind of like just works right now. I mean, it, it takes some work uh, on 
on a mobile developer's end just to like make sure you tie everything together. Um, but that's like the easier part. Like as a mobile developer, uh, we need to not be like adding complexity on top of something that might be new for someone already or uh, things that like the protocol or like implementations give us like fallback addresses, uh, just this lightning invoice that just like has everything within it that you need and people don't need to like put how many Satoshis they're paying. Um, so it's a pretty cool experience and uh, yeah, that's it for me.